But it was during the ministry time, there was a young boy right here whose name was Matthew, who was the first person I saw, and he got saved right here, right here, and it's right here at the front. He just gave his life to the Lord. And, um, and I, I was so elated about that. But then also, one of, my, one of the parts that I was, you know, there was, didn't know how it would turn out, was that we invited some kids uh, from Care Center. And, um, you know, some of the kids, it was just rough. They were having a rough time. Just had a hard time. I just didn't know if they would receive anything or receive something that would re-receive what was going on. And um, got to the point where, they, where the, the enemy had used three of them uh, to steal from the only guy that I knew of. There was other, there was other guy saved, but he had taken a phone from the, this guy. And we ended up having, it was, a, it, was a, it was just chaos. I was so upset. I was like, Lord, why, why in the world would this happen at a conference? You know, what would happen? So the family gets involved. The, they call the parents. The parents are up here. I'm like, this is not going to end well, Lord. I don't know. And I'm just going to stop right there and tell you, don't, don't start talking about how things are going to end until you know that heaven really has the final word over your situation. Do not start speaking stuff over a situation you don't have no idea. And this is what I said. It's not going to end well. All the conference, Lord, people getting saved, people getting touched, and now I'm out here, the police have come, and uh, these guys maybe, I don't know, if they, they produce a phone or whatever, and I'm just, it was just a mess. And so I'm sitting there, it's a long, so the conference is long over, I'm just like, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I just got to deal with this. And so um, the police, you know, handed out some things, and then the Lord spoke to me in the middle of that time where the police were here, and he said, I want you to go get them the Jenkins family, and I got permission to share this. I said, he goes, I want you to go get them. I was like, Lord, what for? They've been here forever. I, I just want them to go. He goes, go get them. I go, and say what? He, and I know that when I say that, the Lord goes, I'm not going to tell you anything else till you obey what I've just told you. <laughs> That's just a relationship that we have. He's like, I'm not going to say anything. He, no, he didn't say that. I just know. I, okay, I know. So as soon as I come in, I walk out this door. I see Mrs. Jenkins sitting over there, and she is swaying back and forth, and she has tears running down her, her face. And I just said, Mrs. Jenkins, I, I believe uh, I would like for you guys to come back in. Um, I, I want the boys to apologize to you, the guys to apologize to you what happened. And then all of a sudden, out of, this, out of my belly says this, uh, just comes these words, and I believe you have something that you want to share with them. And I was like, where did that come from? I don't know if she has something to share with them. I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up as I go. I'm just making stuff up. I'm just making stuff up. God, I hope she does have something to share with them. And so I, I, I said, she goes, okay. I said, I said, will you go get your husband? And I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get the guys ready. And so she walks in the door. And as she walks in the door, um, Mr. And Mr. Jenkins is 6'4". I mean, he is, he, I mean, Wah! you know what I'm saying? He's got that going on. And so he's, he's sitting there. And, um, and all of a sudden, she begins to share. And as she begins to share, she's talking about, she asked, did any of you guys have, do you have father? Do you have a father? None of them have fathers. And so she goes, I want to hug you. She's a, she's a black lady. She goes, I want to hug you, and I want to whip your behind at the same time. So that's where we talk. She goes, I want to do that at the same time. And so she goes, and she said, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hug you. And so she walked over there, and she began to hug them. The father, who's 6'4", he's tall, he walks up, and he says, as a father, I want to love you and tell you how much I care about you and how I want you to receive the love from a father. Come on, release and let it go. Let this father love you. Let this father hold you that you've never been held before. Let this father and just bestow the love. He goes, come on. And he's shaking them in his arms and everybody's breaking down because you see, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but God knew how it was going to turn out because those that are a fatherless generation needed to know the love of a father. So a father came in and grabbed those guys up that they've never received the love of a father and he began to shed his love upon them and I'm telling you what there's tears in their eyes I'm crying Kevin's crying everybody in the room is crying why because there's a love that comes from the father of lights that comes through us and to a hurting and lost and dying generation even a colorful generation God is wanting to show himself strong to the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts. Now, I didn't expect that to happen, but it just, it just, he just did. He sh and I'm watching him shake these guys in his arm, and they don't know what to do. And so you can see that look on his face. One of them, one of them looked at me. He was like, rescue me. I go, no, no, I 
rescuing you. That's exactly what you need. He was like, help. No, I'm not helping you because God is your very present help in time of trouble. And you're in trouble right now. But God has come to the rescue. And so receive his love. He was, he was looking at me. He being shake up. He just, I go, just receive it. And so as I said that, the father goes, just receive it. Just receive it. And all of a sudden, they, I'm just telling you, they got infused with the love of God. I'm telling you what, those boys will never be the same again. They'll never forget six foot four walking up in and just hugging them and loving them. I want to tell you this this morning. Your father is bigger than six foot four. He's the biggest thing that you'll ever encounter. And he wants to wrap you up in his arms this morning and say, I love you. Receive, receive, receive the love of the father so that you can be who he's called you to be and do what he's called you to do.